So we're going to take a look at acid-base indicators here. This is section 6.3 in your textbook. So an acid-base indicator is the substance that changes color when the pH of a solution changes. Indicators exist in two forms that each have a different color, if not actually more. So some indicators have multiple colors, and what we're looking at here is cabbage indicator showing different colors for different pH values. So acid-base indicators actually have really complicated molecular structures structures and formulas. So we use abbreviations to identify them rather than a chemical formula. For instance, um, sorry, uh, we have uh, H and then whatever the abbreviation would be for the lower pH form of an indicator and then just the indicators um, short form uh, minus for the higher pH form of the indicator which would be more basic. So for instance, if we used phenylphthalein, if you look on the back of your periodic table in the acid-base indicators and find phenylphthalein, it has two things beside it. It has H, pH, and pH minus. So the pH stands for phenylphthalein. Only phenylphthalein has this indicator um, abbreviation. So pH minus means it's the more basic form. And HPH, again, think H is acidic, would be the more acidic, so the lower pH form. So what we're going to do here is take a look at more indicators from your periodic table. The one that's not on there, though, is litmus. So I've written the abbreviation here for us. So H lit or lit um, negative would be the abbreviation for litmus. It actually has a different pH range. It's not four point or sorry five to eight. It's four point five to eight point three. Okay. So remember H I N is the more acidic pH and H, uh, or sorry, IN minus would be the more basic range. Now note that in your um, periodic table, all of them are written with the H version, version first and the pH version second. So because of that, what we see here is that HLIT would be our more acidic version and that would be 4.5. So what this says is that if something has a pH of 4.5 or less, we know that litmus, when it's acidic, would turn red. Okay. If we were measuring a solution who had a pH of 8.3 or higher, we know that it would turn litmus blue. Okay, so we're going to use this idea for a few different indicators. So looking at the back of your periodic table again, in the acid base indicators table, bromothymol blue is listed with an abbreviation of HBB or B. B minus. Now directly beside that, it shows that bromothymol blue's pH range is 6.0 to 7.6. What this is saying is that anything 6.0 or less would be our acidic indicator version. 7.6 and higher would be RBB minus abbreviation. Now, again, moving to the next column, it says that bromothymol blue turns yellow to blue. So what that's saying is that as the pH goes from 6.0 to 7.6, bromothymol blue will turn from yellow to blue. So if something has a pH of 5, bromothymol blue will be yellow. Okay. So, 
our indicator color, the acidic version. So anything less than it, 6.0, will be yellow. Okay, and anything from it, 7.6 and onwards, it will be blue. Know that anywhere in between those colors, it will be green. So between 6 and 7.6, that boromothymol blue will have part yellow and part blue, and yellow and blue make green. Looking at phenolphthalein, we knew its abbreviation previous was HPH and PH minus. Now its pH range is 8.2 to 10.0. Now, when it's in its acidic version, anything less than 8.2, it will be colorless. And anything beyond 10 will be pink. So we use acid-based indicators in a couple of different places. Uh, so we'll use them in titrations, which is next unit, or a few topics later, sorry. And to estimate the pH of a solution. So we can use this to replace a pH meter. It's not as accurate, but it can give us a range and a good idea of what that solution is. So we have two examples here. The first one, we just need to predict the indicator color for the specified pH. So if we have a solution that has a pH of 2.8, and we're measuring it using bromo cresyl green. So if we added drops of bromo cresyl green to our solution, what we need to look at is that bromo cresyl green changes color from 3.8 to 5.4. Now 2.8 is less than 3.8, and anything less than 3.8 will be yellow. Using that same idea, Phenol red changes color from 6.6 .6 to 8. Anything less than 6.6 .6 will be yellow. Anything greater than 8 will be red. Now because 8.5 is obviously greater than 8, our solution will be red. Cressel red. If you look at Cressel red, it has two lines there. It says that Cressel Red changes color a few different times. So the first color change, H2Cr to HCr minus, is from 0 to 1, so really low. It'll turn from red to yellow. Then, if we keep going, HCr minus and Cr2 minus, the color changes 7 to 8.8. .8. Anything less than 7 will be yellow, and anything greater than 8.8 .8 will be red. So what we know is that between 0 and 1, it'll be a mix of red to yellow, so orange. Anything greater than 1 up to 7 will be yellow. And anything between 7 and 8.8 .8 will again be orange. And anything greater than 8.8 .8 will be red. So Cressel Red at 8 is in between the 7 and 8.8, .8, so it'll be in between those two colors, mixing colors. That will be orange. Okay. Cressel red from at 1.6 is between that 1 and 7. Anything greater than 1, yet less than 7, is yellow. Last one, methyl violet with a pH of 1. So methyl violet changes color between 0 and 1.6, and it changes from yellow to blue. So because 1 is between those two values, it'll be between those two colors. Between yellow and blue is green. Our last example here is if we test a solution with several different indicators, we can determine the pH. So we've tested with orange 4, bromo crystal green, phenol red, and bromothymol blue. And so we're going to use this information to create a, an idea of the range of pH this solution could be. 
So our first step is to decide what this um, color is telling us about each solution. So looking at orange 4, orange 4 turns from red to yellow. It goes from 1.4 to 2.8. So what this says is that a pH greater than or equal to 2.8, this solution will be yellow. So therefore, our solution being measured must have a pH of greater than or equal to 2.8. So we're going to use this information idea for bromo crystal green. Bromo crystal green changes from yellow to blue between 3.8 and 5.4. Therefore, this solution must have a pH greater than or equal to 5.4. Now remember, we're testing the exact same solution in all of these cases. So already what this shows is that the pH was greater than 2.8, but it also has to be greater than 5.4. So a pH, for instance, of 3.5 will not be sufficient to turn bromo crystal green blue. Therefore, we know we can rule it out in this case. Continuing on, phenol red is yellow when the pH is less than or equal to 6.6. Okay, so we can't go too high on our pH scale. This cannot have a pH of 8. That would be incorrect. Bromo thymol blue is yellow. Bromo thymol blue is yellow when the pH is less than or equal to 6.0. Now, some of you can look at all of these numbers and know exactly what the pH is, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on a bit of a number line. So I waited to make my number line until I knew which numbers on our pH's, um, sorry, scale was important. So 2.8 showed up, 5.4, I'm not drawing this to scale at all, 6.0, and 6.6 were important points. What I'm going to do is use a different color for each indicator. So orange 4 being yellow, so the pH had to be greater than 2.8. So 2.8 and onwards is what that could be. Doing the same thing for bromel crystal green. The pH had to be 5.4 or greater. Phenol red. The pH had to be 6.6 .6 or less. And the last one, bromo thymol blue, the pH had to be less than or equal to 6. Now looking at this, it's a bit of a disaster, but what we're looking for is where all four, or however many, we had in our question overlap. And so they all overlap between 5.4 and 6.0. So what we can say is that the pH of our solution must be within this range for all of these colors to match up. So we'll write that like we would in math. The pH has to be less than 6, but greater than or equal to 5.4. So we can use this information to create a bit of a um, number line to then find the pH range that is possible for our solution. Your homework today is an indicators worksheet. It's online. I don't have any hard copies for you, so you're going to have to work off your laptop. And the answer key is there, so be sure to check your work when you're done.